Now, when I first saw touch and hold delay, I was ecstatic. One of the problems that I have seen with my son, particularly because he, well, now he's got great fine motor control, but, but as I've seen him develop the fine motor control, he was not always able to touch the icon either long enough or what often happened was he touched the icon too long. And so what I think is absolutely brilliant about the touch and delay, there are three settings within it in terms of sensitivity, but what this accessibility setting does is it tells the operating system how long between the time the user touches it and the user lets go before it considers it a touch and hold. So when you think about gestures and you think about interfacing with a, with a touch device, if you touch something, if you tap on something, that's one kind of action. If you tap and hold on something, that's another kind of action. If you can increase the tap and hold delay, for, that is very beneficial for some users who don't have the fine motor to be able to just do a quick tap. And so by increasing that delay, they can do a tap that is more suitable for their um, physical capability and still does not consider it, it still does not count as a tap and hold. The longest one is a, it's actually fairly long. Again, every user is completely different. You're going to have to test this out with the user. But I love the fact that this feature is built into the operating system so that every button you have the longer capability uh, between so the user doesn't get false positives or false results. This also plays into when users touch the screen um, inadvertently with, let's say, the side of a hand. Um, so one of the problems that my son often has is he accidentally touches the screen with the side of his hand and it activates something. And so while this doesn't certainly take that away, it does prevent it from deleting applications and so forth and so 